The Ahsoka series is right around the corner. To prepare, here's everything you need to know about the story. First and foremost, it'll be premiering in the midst of two Hollywood strikes. The Writers Guild of America and the Screen Actors Guild are both striking against the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, companies like Disney, Amazon, Netflix, and more. Streaming is at the heart of both strikes, as the Guild seek fair compensation for their work on Disney+, Plus, Netflix, Amazon Prime, and so on. Basically, the producers aren't being transparent with their streaming numbers and are not paying writers or actors in the same way they would for their work on network television. Ahsoka star Rosario Dawson is among those striking against Disney and the rest of the AMPTP. Ahsoka would not exist without the hard work of the writers and actors who created not only it, but also Disney Plus exclusives like The Mandalorian, The Book of Boba Fett, or other series featured on the service like The Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels. I'll put a link in the cards to our video going into more detail surrounding the strike and the gross behavior from studio heads, including Bob Iger, the CEO of Disney. But moving into Star Wars stuff, let's set the stage for Ahsoka in the universe. The series takes place around the same point in the timeline as The Mandalorian and The Book of Boba Fett, about five years after the Battle of Endor and the events of Return of the Jedi. The New Republic is in control of the galaxy, but the Imperial Remnant is experiencing a resurgence as one of their leaders returns to the galaxy. Grand Admiral Thrawn was a brilliant military tactician who rose to prominence in Star Wars Rebels. He was first created by Timothy Zahn for the book Heir to the Empire way back in 1991. His inclusion in the animated Rebels series was a big deal in 2016, and now his appearance in live action is, once again, a very big deal to longtime Star Wars fans. In Rebels, he was a major villain for the growing Rebel Alliance, but was removed from the war thanks to the actions of a young Jedi Padawan named Ezra Bridger. He was able to summon several massive, spacefaring, whale-like creatures called Pergil to attack Thrawn's fleet, and use their natural ability to access hyperspace to take him to some unknown part of the galaxy. But Ezra Ezra was taken along with the Grand Admiral. That's where Ahsoka comes in. This character has already appeared in live action twice, but she's still shrouded in mystery for any Star Wars fan who hasn't watched any of the animated series. Ahsoka was the Padawan of Anakin Skywalker during the Clone Wars, but she left the Order before her training was complete. She survived the Jedi Purge and began helping Rebel Cells under the codename Fulcrum. We last saw her in a mysterious place called the World Between Worlds, a realm that existed outside of time and space. There, Ezra was able to rescue her from a duel with Darth Vader, who she knew to be her former master. When she returned to her own time, she promised to find Ezra, not knowing what that mission would actually mean. The epilogue of Star Wars Rebels shows her ready to begin the search alongside Sabine Wren. Sabine was a Mandalorian member of Ezra's Rebel cell. The two had a close friendship, and the young man also made it clear he was counting on Sabine to come find him. She once wielded the Darksaber and was the character who gifted it to Bo-Katan, which was alluded to in the Mandalorian. Mandalorian and the Book of Boba Fett. She also helped the Mandalorians rise up against the Empire, which resulted in the Great Purge. We don't currently know how she has handled the near destruction of her people. I imagine we'll get those answers as she and Ahsoka search for Ezra. The knowledge that Ahsoka trained Sabine in some capacity is new to the series. I think it's unlikely Sabine is Force-sensitive. She was probably just continuing her lightsaber training because Ezra gifted her his weapon before disappearing, but we'll have to wait and see. Also joining the quest is Harrison Dula, who was the leader of the Ghost Crew in Star Wars Rebels. She rose through the ranks of the Rebel Alliance to become a general, serving at the battles of Scarif, Endor, and beyond. She had a son named Jason, with a former Jedi named Kanan Jarrus, who died during the events of Rebels. She also had a droid named Chopper, an astromech she rescued from a downed Y-Wing during the Clone Wars when she was just a child. He's cranky and violent, and probably has the highest kill count in Star Wars Rebels. Seriously, his body count is in the thousands. The final member of the team is Professor Hu Yang, another droid seen in a handful of shots from the trailers. He is actually around 25,000 years old, having been created during the Dawn of the Jedi. He helped younglings construct their first lightsabers and had a catalog of nearly every lightsaber ever built in his databank. The crew will likely be traveling the galaxy for at least part of the adventure in Hera's ship, the Ghost. It was the home to her crew in Star Wars Rebels and can be seen at the Battle of Scarif in Rogue One and the Battle of Exegol in The Rise of Skywalker. On the opposite side of the fight, we have Morgan Elsbeth, a character that first appeared in The Mandalorian. She dueled Ahsoka, who demanded to know where her master, Grand Admiral Thrawn, was. So Elsbeth works for Thrawn, but it would appear she doesn't know where he is, so we might be seeing a bit of a race to find both Ezra and Thrawn. We see Elsbeth accessing a star map of some kind, and while it's not yet confirmed, I believe she is using Night Sister magic to do so, an aspect of the Force associated with the dark side. 
Joining her hunt are Balin Skull and Shin Hati. Balin is described as a former Jedi who survived the Purge and became a Force-sensitive mercenary during the reign of the Empire. We don't yet know why he is interested in finding Thrawn, but it has something to do with a desire for power. Under his wing is his apprentice, Shin. She is one of the more mysterious characters we've been introduced to in the trailers so far, and we know very little about her. When we last saw Elsbeth, she was captured by Ahsoka. I think it's likely Balin and Shin will be breaking her out of a New Republic transfer Transport, an attack we have seen in the trailers. Yet another Force-sensitive works alongside Morgan Elsbeth, a former Inquisitor named Marok. That name in their face is currently unknown, leading fans to question if it's someone we've already met. Their armor matches that of the Eighth Brother, a Jedi hunting character that also appeared in Star Wars Rebels, but we have no way to confirm that for now. Behind the camera, Writers Guild of America member Dave Filoni has written all eight episodes of the season. Dave is well known as one of the producers of The Mandalorian and the surrounding series of that era, but he also has a strong connection to Ahsoka. He created the character alongside George Lucas for the Clone Wars animated series. Filoni was one of the creators of Star Wars Rebels, as well as an executive producer, writer, and director on that series. So all of these characters are near and dear to his heart. He will be directing some episodes of Ahsoka along with Steph Green, Peter Ramsey, Jennifer Getzinger, Gita Patel, and Rick Famuyiwa. The music will be composed by Kevin Kiner, who wrote fantastic scores for The Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels, so Ahsoka should feel very consistent in that regard. As usual, there are also some leaks and rumors we can dive into. I try to stay away from that stuff as much as possible personally, but the nature of the job is that a lot of it winds up being sent to me whether I want it or not. Everything I've talked about so far is from officially released trailers or other marketing, but I'm about to discuss one one rumor here at the end that I would consider being from a reputable source, The Hollywood Reporter. If you want to go into the series without that knowledge, this is your warning. Almost two years ago, The Hollywood Reporter caught wind that Hayden Christensen would be playing Anakin Skywalker again in the Ahsoka series. More and more potential proof has popped up since then. How he will appear is unclear right now. I'm hopeful we'll get to see Ahsoka interact with her master's force ghost, but flashbacks are certainly not off the table either. Considering Filoni's connection to the Clone Wars, I would not be surprised at all to see scenes from that era. But that's going to bring us to the end of everything I think you need to know before watching Ahsoka. If you want to dive into more information about most of the characters I mentioned today, I'll link to a playlist in the cards where you can get full backstories for all of the major characters, and I've got more on the way as we approach the series. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel for all our Ahsoka coverage, follow us on our socials, and consider checking out our Patreon page, where we'll have video reactions and audio commentaries for every episode as they release. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.